Hey everybody, this is Keith here of Euphoria Pictures. Welcome back to my channel. So I thought I'd do something a little different with this video. Uh, I'm going to show off uh, my equipment that I use to watch movies. Uh, every time I do a video, there's always someone that leaves a comment asking what, whether what player I'm using, what 4K player am I using, what sound system I'm using, or what TV I have. So I just thought, you know what, it'd be a great idea to actually finally do a video on this and uh, kind of just show everyone exactly what I am using. Uh, when I'm actually watching movies, especially in this room. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my TV first, then go onto my soundbar on my Blu-ray player. So with my TV, I'm going to show off uh, how the TV is calibrated because I actually have it professionally calibrated. And then the soundbar itself, that is not professionally calibrated. I've done that myself and uh, very, very happy about how I have that set up. And then I'll quickly show the, the 4K player. So uh, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Right, so here we go. This is my LG TV. Uh, the model is the CX and it's a 65 inch. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do with this TV is I'm going to just knock on the, put on the settings for you. And just give you an idea what way I have this set up, uh, especially when you have a uh, HDR content or Dolby Vision on. So as you can see up in the top there, you've got picture mode settings. So you click onto that. And uh, when you click in here, you'll have six options. You have Vivid, Standard, Cinema Home, Cinema User, Game and Film Maker mode. Now the reason why I have it set to Cinema User is because if you knock on like Vivid or maybe even Game mode or Film Maker mode, it can actually grey out certain options on this TV where Cinema User, you've got everything kind of just open for you. So always stick to Cinema User. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice again with this TV you kind of let the, 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 the player on the TV do the talking for you Especially when you're watching HDR content. So as you can see the OLED light uh, backlight is set to uh, 100 uh, You have contrast at 1 to 100 brightness at 50 sharpness at 10 uh, The color is set to 50 and tint is always on zero So then when you go into advanced controls uh, with me any kind of picture processing I knock off now there is certain things on this TV you might be tempted to play with, but trust me, you're hindering your picture. Like for instance, uh, super resolution. Uh, people will instantly see that and want to knock it on, but you are, trust me when I say, you're hindering your picture, so stay away from it. So the color garment is set to auto. Uh, the white balance and the color management I'm not going to mess with now because I actually have that set up um, for when I'm watching just uh, standard Blu-rays. So when you, whenever you're watching HDR content, uh, you let the TV and the players kind of just uh, dictate uh, what they want to do with the white balance and color management system. Uh, so you have the peak brightness on a high, but then I have the peak brightness knocked off when I'm watching standard Blu-ray. Right, so go out of there and then we will go down to uh, picture options here. And much just, just like uh, the last features as well, any kind of picture processing knocked, knocked off, uh, noise reduction, uh, make sure you have none of these on. Uh, it's almost like, a, this is almost like DNR in a sense. Uh, it kind of just removes any kind of uh, fine detail of the picture. And uh, I, I don't even know why these features are on these TVs. Um, I think it might be for when maybe if you're watching um, some older DVDs or something like that. So you have smooth graduation off. Uh, your back lock, black levels are set to auto. Real cinema is on. Uh, it's the only processing you actually have on this TV that I do have on. Uh, of course, motion eye care is set to off, and then true motion is set to off. Now, true motion can be a, definitely a feature that can be played with a bit. You can have you have a few options there where you have cinema clear, you have natural, you have smooth, and you've also got user. Now, the great thing about user is it'll let you adjust uh, your the judder and your the blur to get it to the way you want to sh uh, set up. And then you've also got LED Motion Pro. So. Uh, so that is uh, the settings that I have on this TV for when I'm watching 4K content. So let's go on to the settings for when you watch a standard Blu-ray. Right, so we have a Blu-ray on here now. So we have our setting up. Uh, as you can see now, we have Expert Darkroom. Uh, so I will click in here and when you click in, you'll see that you have a hell of a lot to play with there. So you have Vivid Standard Eco Cinema Sports Game HDR Effect Film Maker Mode. Expert bright room, expert dark room. I'm always in a dark room, so I always have an expert dark room. Uh, never put it onto vivid, in my opinion, or eco. Uh, you just grey out a lot of features on this TV. So uh, go out of dash, and as you can see, then my OLED light is down to 80 instead of the 100 that it was on HDR. Contrast is at 92 now. Uh, brightness still remains at 50. Sharpness is on 15. Uh, color set to 50. Tint is, of course, at zero. 
Then you have advanced controls here, and again, as you can see, any picture processing is still knocked off, so down, dynamic cr uh, contrast is off, uh, but you do have three, uh, four different features for that there. Uh, you have super resolution, of course, that will always be knocked off, uh, but again, four options there. Then you have color garnish, you have wide, extended, and auto, I always stick to auto. Uh, gamma is set to 2.2, but you, have, you can put it on 1.9, 2.4, and BT1886. But I always have it, I think it just looks, uh, the brightness looks perfect on 2.2. Uh, white balance, and uh, I had this professionally calibrated, uh, and I will quickly take you through this. So as you can see, the color temperature is set to warm too. So when you go to this here, you have method 10 point IRE. So as you see there, you have IRE, a uh, hundred target illuminance, a uh, hundred. And then down here, you can see your red, green, and blue is uh, all at zero. But now if you go up here and click on this, and then you go to 22 point, uh, you'll notice then your IRE is at 100, your target illuminance is at 100, still the same. But now you've got red at minus 10, green at 0, blue at 0. And then again back up here and then you click it to 2 point. And you will see now that your point is on low. And then your red is on plus 5, green is on plus 6 and your blue is on plus 6. So that's how I have my white balance set up. Now, I had my color management system uh, professionally calibrated as well, but for some strange reason, uh, it has factory reset back to, uh, well, yeah, it's just factory, factory reset -ish. So I can't really show off uh, what has been done uh, when it comes to being this being calibrated. But the one thing I will say to you, folks, is do not play with this feature uh, because chances are you will harm uh, the color on your TV. Uh, so definitely stay away from it unless you... Uh, Get it professionally calibrated so then you can notice there as well your peak brightness that is set to off uh, only have that on when you're watching uh, 4k movies so our dash we go and then to the picture options again so of course we have noise reduction off uh, mpg noise reduction off smooth graduation of course off black level is set to auto uh, real cinema is on and uh, then you have motion eye care that's set to off always have that off and then my true motion is set to off. But again, just like the HDR settings, uh, true motion can be played with a bit. So that is it, folks. That is how I have my television set up. And I really do think it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, I have to look into uh, uh, having my, uh, what's it called? The uh, the color, uh, what was it? Uh, the, t the color management system. I'm going to have to get that someone to have a look at that again. I have no idea why that factory reset. Uh, so I want to get that back uh, looking proper. But um, the way the TV stands now at the moment, it looks absolutely brilliant. And uh, I hope these settings do uh, help a few years out though. Right, so here we go onto my soundbar. So this is the Q90R uh, soundbar from Samsung. Uh, as you can see there, it's, well, it's in conjunction as well with uh, Harman Kardon. Uh, so the first thing I'll show you quickly is this soundbar is a seven by one by four speaker setup so right here in the front i don't know if it can be seen but uh right in the end here you have one speaker you have one in the middle and then you have one in the end there as well and then when you go up here uh, i hope you can see that that is the first uh, up firing speaker you have and then right at the end here is actually the side firing speakers you have right here so then take it right across here and that is the other up firing uh, speaker i think you might be able to see it and then yeah at the end is the final uh, side speaker so it's a fantastic soundbar it's incredibly it's a chunky looking soundbar incredibly heavy and uh definitely probably the greatest it is no question the greatest soundbar when it comes to sound out there but having said that you do have to spend a bit of money on it right so i'm going to show you some of the features at the end of the soundbar here so as you can see i have a digital in uh, then you have a hdmi one then you've also got HDMI 2, so yes there is two HDMI connections on this soundbar. Uh, you got Wi-Fi set up, you got your Bluetooth set up, uh, and then it's back to your digital in, or digital in, so yeah. And then you've also got a, an optical connection on the back of that soundbar as well, if you want to go down that route. So I'll go through some of the settings here, so you have the treble here, and I have that set to 4, I think it is, yeah? And that goes up to a max of 6. Uh, the bass, I always have it set under treble and you have it at three. Uh, the sync always set to zero. Uh, the center channel I have to six uh, because you do not want your uh, your 
dialogue being drowned out by the other speakers. So I have that set to max. Uh, side speakers, I have set to level four as far as I remember. Uh, then you have your front up speakers. And I have them set up to six, I think it is. I think they have, I have them set to max. Yeah, I do. So then here you have the rear uh, level. And I have that set to six, no, five on the rears. And then you will also have the rear top levels where I have them set, I have them maxed to six. And then the last thing you have on this is, um, I think it's virtuality. And I have that, a virtual, sorry, and have that set to off. Right, so here is the rear speakers of my soundbar. And as you can see, they're very, very big. Uh, that's the left speaker. And then right over there, as you can see, is the right one. Uh, so the reason why I'm quickly just showing you these is because both these speakers actually have up-firing drivers on them as well. So I'm hoping that I can capture it with this camera. So as you can see, there is the speaker for the up-firing sound, uh, for the up-firing, uh, sorry, driver. And uh, yeah, I move it over here and then as you can see, it's the same on this one. And I think that really does add to the whole immersion. You're just in this room, you do get this incredible uh, kind of dome-like sound. And uh, I think it's down to these rear speakers to why I get that. So uh, that is my sound system. So uh, let's go on to the 4K Blu-ray player. Right, so on to my last part of this video and this is my 4K Blu-ray player. So this is a Panasonic, uh, the UB820. Uh, in my opinion, definitely up there with one of the best 4K Blu-ray players you can get. Uh, I've owned three 4K players now, and none of them uh, come close to some of the specs that you get on this, uh, which I'm going to show you right now. Right, so here we go. This is the menus for the Panasonic player. So this is the operations menu. So you have your soundtrack there. Yeah, you have sub uh, subtitle settings. You've got angle, repeat play, secondary video, playback information window, control panel, your top menu, and your pop-up menu. Uh, this is the part now that I, I love with this player. It's the, it's the settings, the picture settings, and the amount of stuff you can actually do with this player is quite amazing. So as you can see, you have display. I have it set to normal, but you do have projector there as well. So that's, uh, that's good for all you uh, people that have projectors. So uh, the picture type, you have normal, you have cinema, you've got fine cinema, retro cinema, animation, and live. These can all be played with, I have it set to normal. Uh, you've got luminance adjustment. Again, this can all be tampered with as well. Again, I haven't really messed with it because I have the TV set to the way I want it. So I'm not gonna kind of uh, hamper the picture by setting the, 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 the brightness and the contrast on the player itself. But as you can see, you've also got tone curve white, tone curve black, and you've got system gamma. Uh, color adjustment, same thing as well. Do not mess with it, but again, it can be there to be played with. You have color saturation, and you've also got hue. Uh, sharpness adjustment, again, you have a uh, luma high frequency and luma mid frequency, and then you have chroma and you have edge correction, edge correction, uh, which is set to zero as well. Uh, noise reduction, of course, as per usual, all set to zero. Um, then you have bandwidth uh, illumination. This is all, again, I, I wouldn't have a clue what this is. So everything is set to off. But there is an amazing amount of features on this um, on this Blu-ray player. And uh, you've got pro uh, progressive, then you've got auto, video, and film. So the one last thing uh, on this... Oh, well, actually, before I go on to the, uh, the last thing, I'm going to show the sound effects as well you have in this, or the sound settings. So you have sound effects to off, and as you can see, there is a serious amount to play with in there as well. Uh, then you have sound effect frequency. I have it set to 192, but then there's also 66 as well. Uh, dialogue enhancer, I have set to off. I just my, I let my soundbar do the talking, <laughs> so to speak, when it comes to uh, dialogue. And then you have high, high clarity sound, and that's set to on, video on. And then you have on, video off, and then you just got off. So the one last thing uh, you can actually do on this TV uh, player as well, uh, and I'm just wondering, can you do it here, or will it come up? It actually won't work. But there is also... Um, there is a HDR setting button on this player and it allows you to, when you're watching HDR movies, uh, you can adjust the HDR to your own liking. So that is it, folks. That is my 4K Blu-ray player. And like I said, probably one of the best uh, 4K players you can buy out there just for the, just for the simple fact that you can, um, there's that many features on it to play with. And uh, yeah, very happy to have it uh, in this room.
Right folks, so there you have it. That is my sound system, my TV and my 4K player. And uh, in this room, it is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, there is no question about it, the, especially the sound system. Uh, it rivals uh, cinema sound, especially in this room. Uh, it just sounds absolutely extraordinary. And uh, I hope uh, the calibrations on my TV might help you out there as well a bit as well, if, in case you're um, uh, just having trouble calibrating your own TVs. So uh, that is it, folks. That is it. So as per usual, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you could do, leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all again real soon with my next video. So take care, folks out there. Stay safe. Bye-bye.